Hey, turn to your Bibles with me. We want to get into God's Word here. I want to share a message, like kind of an introductory message over the next couple weeks. We're going we're gonna to talk about uh, uh, the idea of just questions and answers in the midst of life's pain. And uh, I've entitled this introductory message, Finding God at Ground Zero. Finding God at Ground Zero. As I said, today uh, our nation is uh, remembering uh, uh, a very tragic day 15 years ago. Sometimes it's hard to believe that it's already been 15 years. Again, we can all remember where we were that day. Uh, when you were, maybe you got, uh, like myself, I, I got a phone call uh, that something was happening. I was here at the church already in my office and uh, uh, just uh, had no idea what was going on and uh, uh, from there began to watch. In fact, that night we were having a men's event and uh, we were at the time going to be having uh, uh, Police Chief uh, uh, Duffy with us. And uh, he uh, had to cancel, of course, because of the heightened security, uh, not only uh, around our nation, but even here in Rochester. And uh, again, we remember, uh, we remember what happened. We remember hearing the stories, the testimonies, the, uh, some of the tragic details, and what now we know as Ground Zero there where the, uh, the trade centers once, once stood. But today I want to just talk about that idea of finding God at ground zero. What does that mean? If you turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. I want to read for you verses 22 through 27. And this is an occasion where Paul, Paul is uh, uh, there in, in, in Athens, Greece, and he's, he's speaking to the philosophers. He's speaking to the educators. He's speaking to the community. I think it would be much like uh, what we maybe see nowadays when uh, maybe you see community leaders come together or, uh, or uh, uh, so, you know, maybe even debate may take place or discussion. But here we have in Acts chapter 17 this occasion where Paul stands up in the meeting and he declares to them, who God is. But let me read these uh, six verses, again, beginning at verse 22, Acts chapter 17. It says, Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Then verse 27 says this, God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Let me read that. Verse 27, that's a powerful verse. The words of Paul uh, on that day as he shared with uh, a community. These are words that we can share with uh, people today. We can share with communities today. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. He's not far from you today. Whatever you may be going through today, he is not far. I want to start out with this statement. Everyone has a ground zero. You say, well, wait, what do you mean ground zero? What, what, what's ground zero? But everyone has a ground zero. It's that place where we ask questions and search for answers. It's usually that place that is very painful. It's that place maybe where loss has taken place. It's that place where uh, just something that Somebody, you could say, is your worst day. Your worst day. 
September 11, 2001 was the, the worst day for many, many people. It's considered one of the worst days of our nation. And it's going to be forever marked in history. But everyone has a ground zero, and it's that place where we ask questions and we search for answers. It's, and the number one question in this place that is asked by all, everyone, is where's God? Where, where was God? And why didn't he stop this or do something? Where's God? And it's, a, 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 it's often, it's not so much a question that's looking for an answer, but it's a, it's a, sometimes we ask those questions where what we're doing is not looking for an answer, but we're, we're just trying to blame somebody. We're just trying to blame somebody. And so God becomes the object of our blame. This is a question that even atheists ask. They'll ask, so where's God? It's a sarcastic question. But they're asking, they're looking for the same answers. And they're, in, in a way, even though they're maybe a confessed atheist, there's still that thought that, oh, God's to blame. Even though they don't believe in him. God's the scapegoat. God's to blame. It becomes a skeptic's taunt, but this is our challenge as believers. Ground zero is that place of greatest pain in our lives. We're, we live in a, a nation, we live in a world now where every day there's breaking news. You may be watching the television and all of a sudden there'll be something, breaking news. Breaking news. It's a non-stop state of alert as the pain of the world is brought to us every day in high definition. We have our September 11, 9-11, but other nations have been impacted tragically by those that are evil, those that have hatred. And we, 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 see, we see the footage of their tragedies just like they've seen the footage of our tragedies on the television. Breaking news, where we experience the evil of life. That's ground zero. That's ground zero. Evil that can happen to us but it's also evil that comes through us. We all have a carnal nature that is driven by evil. Oh, we may want to say, no, I, I, I've never said an evil thing in my life. I, 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 I don't have evil in my heart. But we need to understand that, as the Lord Jesus himself said, if we have hatred for a fellow man, if we have dislike for a fellow man. If we choose to ignore our fellow man, that's a, that's a shade of evil. That's a shade of evil. And it can create a ground zero for others. Think about ground zero, this place, this place called ground zero. It can become a stepping stone or it can become a stumbling block in our search for God. Ground zero is also that place where the church can be Come a place of refuge and hope. And we need to understand it's actually a, a very sacred privilege. It's a responsibility, but we need to look at it as a privilege that as believers, we can be dedicated to helping others in their ground zero. Helping others in that place where they're asking questions and searching for answers. Well, now immediately that's what our, our thought is. Well, I don't know the answer. I, I don't want to do that. I don't know what the answer is. We do know what the answer is. Paul knew what the answer was. He saw there that, that there in Greece that they had an idol, they had a, an altar, they had a, a, a representation uh, that was to an unknown God. And basically they, they were covering all the bases. They had their gods for everything else. And so this temple, this, uh, this altar to an unknown God was in case they missed one on the way, all right, to an unknown God. And Paul, because that unknown God, that was a question. They, they, that, that, was, that was basically a question. The, the, the God that we don't know, the one true God, the real God, the living God. And Paul said, 
I can tell you about that God. I can tell you about who he is. And that's what, that's what we can do as well. And we, we need to understand that every day we're crossing paths with somebody that may be at the ground zero of their life. The painfulest moment of their life. And we have the privilege, the responsibility to help them have hope and to help them have a faith. So I just want to share with you three, quickly, three answers. We're going to have the opportunity for communion as we close off the service here. But to just understand, I, 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 I call these three answers to the question, where's God? Why, why hasn't God done something? Uh, uh, why did God do this? Whatever form of that question you maybe have asked or you've heard somebody ask, and you don't know the answer or you don't know what answer to give them. Number one, first of all, I want, uh, we need to understand God is not the source of pain, but he is the source of peace. God is not the source of pain, but he is the source of peace. The gift of comfort and hope uh, that comes through his son, Jesus Christ. That's the source of peace. Jesus came. He wasn't took on the pain of man mankind. He took on the penalty of sin. He who knew no sin, committed no sin, had no evil in his nature at all. He wasn't the source of pain, but he took on our pain so that he could be our peace. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus came to us, drawn to us, because we were in need. We needed to. He didn't need anything. He's the son of God. But he came to us. He was drawn to us. He was drawn to those in great need. So that he could be the source of peace for them. And we need to know that those that are in need were drawn to him. As Jesus walked this earth uh, some three, uh, 30 years, but his ministry for three uh, plus years. Multitudes came to him. They were drawn to him because they had needs. They had, they had those ground zeros. They had that pain. And they were seeking that peace. And they probably were asking, I say, where's God? Why isn't God doing something? And then and they would meet Jesus as Jesus would come to them. And they'd recognize that God was doing something. God was revealing himself to them. So God's not the source of pain, but he is the source of peace. That is an answer that you can give to someone. Secondly, God is not the source of trouble, but he is the source of truth. Pain and trouble can be something beyond our control. Pain and trouble and suffering can come to us for really no explainable reason. Things can happen beyond our control, not even our fault. But it can happen. But likewise, pain and trouble and, uh, 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 and those ground zeros that we experience, sometimes they are self-inflicted because of decisions that we've made, because of acts that we have done, the result of our own evil, our own wrong decisions regardless of the reason the lord desires and is willing to help the lord wants to reveal his truth his truth that is not just a temporary truth but it's an eternal truth john chapter 8 verses 31 and 32 uh, jesus said these words if you hold to my teachings you are really my disciples and verse 32 says then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
the truth will set you free. God, from the beginning of creation, creation, has offered his truth. He has told the truth. He is trustworthy. He is not the father of lies and deception. He is not the father of philosophy. He is the father of truth. His son, Jesus, came. He didn't say, I have the truth, or I can tell you the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we need to understand that his truth comes in his word. The written word that we have, the Bible, God's word that we have. And it's the truth that offers blessings and promises. It's the truth that comes in commands and warnings to protect us from the dangers of evil. But it's the truth. It's the truth. And all man has tested that truth time and time again throughout history. You and I, we each have tested that truth at some time with decisions that we've made, <coughs> with, with actions that we've, uh, we've done. We've tested that truth. And God's truth is proven over and over again. His promises, his blessings, and the warnings that are there, providing boundaries of behavior and the definitions of what is good and what is evil, what is light and what is darkness. God gives us the truth about who we are and about who he is. And when you understand that being set free, when Jesus said that the truth will set you free, uh, it wasn't uh, being set free so that we can proclaim our rights to, to do whatever we want, but as the power to do what is right and what is good. That's the truth. That's the truth. Romans 1.18 is a verse that tells us about some of the choices that people make. Romans 1.18 says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Suppress the truth. Sometimes we do that to ourselves. We deny the truth. We, uh, we pretend, well, no, God didn't say it that way. God didn't mean it that way. And we're suppressing the truth so we can justify what we want to do. And in a way, we can say, well, I have the right to do whatever I want. And we're right. God gives us the choice. You can do whatever you want. And often we try to suppress the truth so that we can justify the wrong decisions that we're making. And we live in a world, you can see, we live in a world that wants to suppress the truth of God. That's what the movie God's Not Dead 2 is all about. A world, philosophy, not just America, but a world in every nation that wants to suppress the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth of God. And we understand God is not the source of trouble, he is the source of truth. And then lastly, that, again, that's an answer you can give to somebody. And lastly, God is not the adversary, but he is the assistance against the real one. Understand what I'm saying there. God is not the adversary. He's not the enemy. But he is the assistance against the real enemy. God's truth reveals the real enemy. The enemy of God. Satan, the devil, Lucifer, and all those who will deny God and, and all those who, 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 who want to uh, make themselves their own God. That's the real enemy. That's the one that should be blamed. That's not God who, uh, who, who does the things that we see around this world. It's not God who uh, destroys people. It's not God who hates people. There is a real enemy, and God will give us the strength and the power to go against that enemy, to go against that enemy. God's word, again, God's truth reveals who the real enemy is. John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's the enemy, the enemy of God. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, and have it to the fullest. 
why don't we start blaming the real enemy? Why don't we start saying, why? Why is Satan doing these things? Why is Satan causing people, tempting people, and, 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 and planting that evil in their hearts? Well, it's already there. It's our human nature. But let's blame the real enemy. Let's blame the real one. God wants to help us. He wants to give us that assistance. He wants to give us that strength and that power. He doesn't turn his back on us. That's his choice. His choice. God did not turn his back on us. He sent his son to us. Because he loved us so much. He loved the world. He loved mankind. He loved every nation, every tribe. Every people. That was his choice. And we have a choice as well. He's given us that choice that we can turn from him, we can ignore him, we can deny him, or we can seek him. And the promise is we will find him when we seek him sincerely. So again, when, when, when you're in, in your ground zero and in, in your, your place of most pain, and uh, maybe it's right now, maybe it was last year, maybe it was a few years ago. You know, my ground zero was almost four years ago when my dad passed away. My ground zero was just this past summer, July 27th, when I held my grandson, Caleb, who was stillborn. A couple of the worst days of my life. God revealed himself. God didn't run from me. And the important thing is, I didn't run from him. And so wherever you're at, if you're at a ground zero, or if you've experienced something that maybe it's been years ago, but it's still there, and there's still times that you question, you say, why didn't God do something? And my encouragement to you is don't run from God, run to him. Seek him. And you may have a ground zero coming up, maybe this week, maybe this year, because everyone has a ground zero. Where it's a day of pain, it's a day of suffering, it's a day of struggle. And it'll be a day where you'll, you'll ask that question, God, where are you? And my prayer for you is that you remember God is not the source of the pain. God is not the source of the trouble. God is not the adversary, but he is and will be your source of peace. He is and will be your source of truth. He is and will be your assistance, your strength in that time of need in that day of suffering. Communion is the opportunity to come to the Lord. 